Okay, welcome everybody to today's event. I'm Jason Gumpert from msdynamicsworld.com. Glad to have you with us for this session all about data integration challenges for Microsoft Dynamics. Our presenter today is Tina Bowie from Kingsway Soft. Uh, it's great to welcome Tina for the first time. Uh, we have a nice audience on the line today and uh, we certainly welcome your questions. You can enter them at any point using the Q&A block. You should see just to the right of the main presentation area. Um, I know uh, Tina and the Kingsway Soft team will be making time for those questions at the end. Uh, so without any further delay, uh, let me hand things off to Tina to get started. Thanks, Jason. Uh, I want to begin by thanking everyone for joining us today in our webinar. Um, as you may know, today we'll be discussing the challenges all businesses face with data migration, integration, and integrity. Some of these challenges come about um, you know, due to the constant growth of databases and applications being used. Developers are constantly facing new data challenges, whether migrating from a legacy system to Microsoft Dynamics 365, or adding new applications and database systems that need to work with existing Microsoft Dynamics applications. So for today, we'll be presenting solutions and how you can overcome these challenges and to solve even the most complex data integration migration requirements. So let's go over today's agenda. We will begin with some common challenges that you will notice in your everyday data integration scenarios. And then we'll go into a little bit of a deeper look with some sample use cases. So we'll show you a case where you can migrate from a legacy system to any Microsoft Dynamics application. And another use case where you can integrate data into Microsoft Dynamics 365 and across multiple applications simultaneously. We'll wrap up the seminar going over some tools and strategies for cleaning duplicate data, formatting errors, and any other issues that can harm the integrity of your data. So just a brief introduction to who we are from kingsaysoft.com. My name is Tina, I'm a part of the client services team, and also on the webinar we have Daniel and Jessica, who will be fielding the Q&A questions that you may send us. And as mentioned before by Jason, we will be leaving Q&A period to the end of the session, and we'll make sure to address any concerns or points that you'd like to bring up to us. So let's get started. Today, we've started with a fictional company just to showcase the challenges that you may find in you know, common data migration and integration scenarios. So like other companies, KWS Industries, they've been in business for a long time. This means that they have lots of data in their original ERP system, which they've used for numerous years. Before they can move to their new Dynamics 365 for financials, which is the equivalent of Dynamics Nav on-prem, that data needs to be cleaned up. They're going to upgrade to Dynamics 365 online and use both their marketing tool and Dynamics CRM together. Now just in the last while, they've chosen to move forward with Dynamics 365 to increase their CRM features. What about later on in the future when they would like to add perhaps another system? All companies need to have a way to synchronize data between all existing systems and potentially new systems down the pipeline. All projects therefore should keep synchronization at the forefront for ease of use and transitioning later on. Now, KWS Industries, like other companies, also want to have a local copy of their CRM and marketing tool data stored in their local servers for analytics purposes. So with that said, let's highlight some of the challenges any companies may need to overcome during a project. How do they get the data out of their current system, such as their source, and then how do they get the data into their new system, which is going to be their target? Now, as mentioned before, they do have to clean up their data as well as prevent filling the new system with bad data. Also, an important note to keep in mind, they do not want to keep spending time cleaning the, the data. They want to find solutions to continue to keep their data clean. Companies are also upgrading from one system and adding another. So they need a solution to manage the sheer amount of data that they'll be working with. All systems should be synchronized with one another. 
all businesses want things like contact information and order history shared across all applications. They also want these applications to work together. So for example, let's say when we're working with a sales order that is complete in NAV or 365 financials, this needs to trigger CM workflows and marketing campaigns. This entire cycle needs to happen automatically with each action in one system triggering its own actions in other systems. We're seeing this more and more, particularly with Dynamics 365 and other online applications constantly pushing out new updates. While it can be very beneficial to have new features, it does add challenges from a development perspective. Companies need a solution to grow and adapt alongside their data systems. And another common data cha challenges that we're facing today, let's say that there's an update that changes your connection to one application. Suddenly, all of your integration jobs are failing. So with custom coded integrations, this is one of the biggest challenges and one of the most common ones that you'll face. Using a custom coded integration, whenever there's a new API introduced by the application, or if you have any application metadata changes, such as new CRM entities or fields, you'll have to recode the integrations by going through the entire validation and deployment process. And again, this can vary project to project. There really is no capacity to streamline this, which can ramp up the budget costs fairly quickly. Our tool can help as we've likely already made a fix for the change at the time of the new API release. So your integration job will be running as soon as your upgrade of our software is done. In the case that you've introduced new application metadata, all you need to do is click the refresh button in our components to ensure that you're working with the latest and greatest CRM metadata. As we've discussed, we're gonna have a brief overview of some of the challenges facing today's integrations with Microsoft Dynamics in particular. Migrating from a legacy system to a new system. So we wanna make sure that the correct data is moved over appropriately and cleanly integration between different Dynamics applications from AX to CRM to NAV to GP to SL, the list really goes on. These applications do not share their data, so we need a solution to access the data across all systems. Integration between Dynamics 365 and a legacy system. With different data models, there are more challenges that present themselves. integration between on-prem and online systems. With our tool, you can connect to both online and on-prem. And lastly, you would like to archive, archive data to a local database system for analytics and auditing purposes. Lately, there's been a move towards cloud solutions, but like with any other system, there are also some challenges businesses must take note of and solution properly. When you're shifting to the cloud, you are going to be experiencing limited or expensive storage, as well as possible performance issues and troubleshooting issues. With our solution, we are able to provide you with more specific details. For example, within our error output, we have three additional columns to track why an error occurred. Error code, error column, and error message. With those details, businesses can get a wider picture of the issue and resolve it quicker. As you can see, this is just a small sample of all the applications that you may need to integrate with. One of the benefits to utilizing the SSIS platform is the ability to work with virtually any database or application system. With SSIS, businesses are primed for almost any data integration project for their existing system as well as any other future systems they may have later on. There's support for the full Dynamics 365 suite, as well as other application systems such as Marketo, Dropbox, Xero, Salesforce, and database connections as well. Now let's talk about one solution to solve all of your data integration and migration challenges. SQL Server Integration Services is Microsoft's answer to enterprise data integration. It allows you to design, implement, and manage high-performance ETL solutions. 
You can extract from various source systems, such as a flat file, database, XML, and so on. And then you can manipulate that data using various transformation components to join, merge, cleanse, derive, calculate, and perform several different functions required for your purpose. And then you can further move that data into a destination system. By using SSIS, SSIS, it significantly reduces time, effort, and cost for the ETL phase of data warehousing, migration, and application integration using drag and drop features. We're going to show you exactly how to solve some of the data challenges we spoke about using our SSIS integration toolkit. So we're going to show you a sample um, data flow task migrating data from a SQL database to a NAV system as a target. In today's webinar, we're using NAV as a sample, but you can use any other application system as you would like. Let me pull up my NAV for you so you can see what the contact list looks like now. So as you can see, this is our current NAV system. We have a select number of contacts on our list. And soon we'll be configuring our data flow task and we'll execute the package. When that happens, we are going to load a new contact into this NAV target. So now I am in my Visual Studio 2012 environment. And I'm going to start off by making a connection manager. This connection manager is going to target my source SQL database. I'm just going to further test my connection to make sure that connection is possible. And I'm going to make my target connection now, targeting Dynamics Nav. We're just going to enter our server information. and select the company we'd like to connect to. Like we did with our source, I'm going to test the connection. And there's my confirmation that all the details are correct. So as you can see, this is my source connection, and this is my target connection. So what we are going to do is load a new contact from our source system into our target nav system. Let's create a data flow task by dragging it to the design surface. And now double clicking into it, you'll see that our SSIS toolbox has changed to include those data flow components. So we first need to work with our source. And I will connect to my source using the premium ADL.NET source component, drag it to my design surface. And let's double click to configure. I'm going to choose my source connection manager that I made previously. And now I'm going to choose my contact database view in order to read from this. I'm going to further parameterize this just for the interest of time today. And it's only going to pull from the very first contact from my data source. If you click on the preview button here, it'll preview that one, that first contact that we've queried. If we go to the columns page, this will just show you a list of all available um, fields from our source that we're reading from. And now I'm going to connect it to my target component, which is the Dynamics Nav destination component. Connect the two. And now let's configure our target component. So now I'm going to choose my Nav target connection manager. And I'm going to be working with the contact as my destination object. For our nav component, we have four actions available. For today, we're going to be using upsert. What upsert does, it's going to look at the nav system and try to find existing matches. If there is no existing match, sorry, if there is an existing match, then it's going to perform an update action. And in the case where they are not able to find an existing match, it's going to perform a create action. Heading over to the columns page, I'm going to choose the columns I would like to map with. So for the first one, 
I'm going to choose email from my source components. And I'll use that as my key as well. Let's choose a couple of other fields, such as the full name field from our source. And perhaps the phone number. That's just an easier visual for you to see, um, detailing all the fields that we're mapping today. In the error handling page, there are error handling mechanisms that you can choose for your error output. Um, the default is to fail an error, so the data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. You can also choose to redirect rows to error output, so this will tell you the error that has occurred and why it occurred. And you can also choose to ignore your errors. So with this said, I'm going to execute this task, and we will see that our source context is going to be loaded in the nav target destination. So let me bring up my nav to you. I'm going to refresh this. There you go. So Yvonne McKay was the contact that our package was executing. So you see that Yvonne was able to start from our source component, and we were able to push her contact details into our target nav financials instance. Now let's go over to a sample use case for our data migration. So for specific migrations, particularly when businesses would need to clean their data in a more specific way, um, we're going to show a simple overview of what this migration data flow task would look like. So for our migration purposes today, this is our sample data task. So as you can see, it's very similar to what we did earlier, um, starting with a premium ADL.NET source, pushing data to the Dynamics Nav destination target later on in the flow. Now, in between, we are using our duplicate data, duplicate detector component. And what this does, it's going to scan our source system to identify any potential duplicates based on a matching criteria set. I'll just double click into it very quickly and I will show you what this looks like. So these are our settings in order to scan for duplicate rows. There's going to be two outputs. We have a unique rows output here, and then also a duplicate rows. We use a conditional splits component so that we are only bringing the first record within a duplicate group into NAV. And then we combine all outputs into one output using the union all component, and then finally pushing the data into our target NAV system. show you again quickly the general flow of a migration. And there you have it. So that's one sample use case for a data migration. Now let's flip over to the other side where we're going to talk about case number two in regards to data integration. So on the other hand, what about data integration where customer information needs to be synchronized across all applications. Now businesses, they want actions in one application to trigger appropriate actions in another system. For example, let's say a sales order is completed in the NAV system. We want to trigger this, or we want this to trigger actions in both CRM and marketing appropriately. Let me bring up a sample data flow task for this data integration. So as you can see, we're back in our Visual Studio 2012 environment, and similar structure to the other tasks that we've done before. We start off with a source component, and then we push that data into our target. In this case, we're writing simultaneously across applications. We have our source of integration, and this will trigger actions in both 
CRM and Marketo as the targets of integration. You can also see how we use the multicast transformation component. And what this component will do is distribute the source input to two outputs. Using the multicast component allows us to write to allows us to write the nav data to both CRM and Marketo at the same time. I'm going to open up the CRM destination component for a closer look. So we begin with the connection manager targeting the CRM system. And then for our source components for CRM, we have seven different write actions. Create, update, delete, upsert, merge, convert, and execute workflow. So there are a variety of options that you're able to choose from. In this case, we're choosing upsert. And just to reiterate, what upsert does, it looks at the existing system to find, um, to find an existing record. So if it is able to find an existing record, it's going to perform an update action. And in the case where there's no existing record that's found, it's going to perform, perform an insert action. Further down, we have some optional settings here. And these are specifically designed for particular integration requirements. These features, um, they have a dual purpose of satisfying a particular requirement and also enhancing the project performance when enabled or disabled. Just located here. Heading to the columns page. There we go. So now we can see the fields that we're mapping. So in this column page, we are using the document number field from nav, and we're mapping it to the name CRM field. This is going to be our matching field. So based on whether a match can be found in the target system, it will create or update a record in the CRM system. After the record is written to CRM, it can trigger the relevant workflows. You can also see that we are performing text lookup on two fields where we're passing in text value instead of an ID. I'm going to open up one text lookup editor to show you the number of lookup methods available. We also have a variety of behaviors included in our text lookup feature, um, some advanced options, and some cache strategies. Let's show you what the error handling page now looks like. So similar to what we showed you before with our nav destination component, there's also an error handling mechanism for our CRM, as well as our Marketo um, destination component as well. Uh, as mentioned before, the default option is to fail an error. So the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There's the redirect rows to error output. And the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. Lastly, we also have the ignore error option. So with that said, I'm going to switch gears and show you the Marketo destination. Here you can see that we are creating a custom activity to begin this type of campaign. In the columns page, we can see the mappings configured. And similar to the CRM destination component, the Marketo destination component also has three error handling mechanisms available here. And there you have it, a simple data flow task. And what this does is it's going to um, perhaps when a sales order is complete in NAV, it's going to trigger actions in both CRM and Marketo at the same time. So you're writing across applications simultaneously. Let's talk about data integrity. What kind of steps can we take to keep, to clean our data first and then secondly, to keep our data clean. Let's go through all the steps that KWS Industries 
took in the two use cases for migration and integration. To clean the source data, we use our duplicate detector to scan rows within the data source and identified duplicate rows using comparison filters on the name and telephone columns. There's also additional options regarding formatting where we can ignore leading and trailing white space. To resolve more formatting issues, there is also the derived column component with its own library of expressions that can be used to replace or remove characters, spacing, and so on. Let's talk about during a data integration. So during a data integration, businesses should plan out their mappings appropriately from both the source input to the target input. As mentioned before, we use the document, num document number column from NAV to map to CRM's name field as a matching key, which works hand in hand with our upstart action so that the components will look up the server and try to find any existing records. If it finds an existing record, it will perform an update action. And if there are no such records, it will perform an insert or create action. Now, after you've pushed data to your target systems, best practice would suggest we continue to keep clean data. Using the upstart action in your packages ensures that it only updates the records it needs to, and it creates new records where no record existed before. The duplicate detector component can continuously scan for duplicate rows based on your comparison filters. And as mentioned before, the derived column has many expressions to transform your data. For example, there are a total of nearly 200 functions for string manipulation alone. Apologies. Now, when we're talking about string manipulation, there are over two dozen expressions available for a grand total of nearly 200 functions to transform your data. Everything we've shown you today was done using our SSIS integration toolkit. Using our software, your data integration is made easy by solving all your data integration challenges within one unified platform. Our components offer great flexibility within various options designed for particular integration requirements, all designed within a friendly, easy to use user interface. Lastly, we offer the best possible performance, specifically designed to avoid as many errors and duplicates as possible. As mentioned before, a strong advantage to working with SSIS is that you can work with virtually any other data source or application systems. Some sample use cases for our solution can deal with integration. So when you're integrating with Microsoft Dynamics with any other application systems, um, as you've seen today. So for today, we're able to integrate um, using our nav as a source and then write simultaneously to other applications such as Dynamics CRM and Marketo. You can also use our toolkit to automate and work with integration tasks on a scheduled basis. For analytics purposes, you can extract data from Microsoft Dynamics Server for perhaps some offline reporting and other business analytics requirements. And lastly, if you would like to replicate your data, perhaps for archival requirements, you are certainly more than welcome to do so using our toolkit. So today we've gone through two sample use cases for integration and migration. 
And we did it within the perspective coming from K KWS Industries, which is, for our exam, or, or all intents and purposes, KWS Industries was a sample fictional company. On the other hand, a real live company is Sound Technologies, which is one of our customers. They started using our integration toolkit for their CRM migration project. With the use of our toolkit, they were able to perform the initial data migration into the CRM system and used it to schedule data integration jobs throughout the testing project. This is so that the new system would be constantly synchronized with data from their production environment, still on CRM 2011. And in doing so, it allowed them to seamlessly perform an overnight switch when they were ready to move the new CRM system into production. Sound Technologies uses our toolkit to run their daily CRM ERP integrations. If you have the time, we, we greatly welcome you to check out their case study for more details, and this can be found available on our website. So why exactly the SSIS integration toolkit? How can our product help you with your data integration and migration projects? Let's talk about scalability first and foremost. SSIS is a very scalable platform that assists with growing CRM systems. Every system, as you know, is constantly growing with the business and luckily SSIS is able to keep up with that growth. It also offers flexibility within the different options that we have designed for a particular integration requirement. So this harkens back to the optional settings we showed you briefly in our CRM destination component. These features have a dual purpose of A, satisfying a particular requirement, and B, enhancing the project performance. You'll find that our interface is user-friendly and straightforward, and it fully immerses the user in a streamlined experience. And since Visual Studio is a part of the Microsoft Business Intelligence Technology stack, you can get all of this access within one environment. Performance-wise, we try to offer as many options as possible to achieve the best possible performance for your project, saving you time overall, as well as your frustration levels. So now let's talk about the benefits of our solution, the SSIS Integration Toolkit. Right off the bat, we do want to stress that our software provides codeless integration which means that you do not need to be a developer in order to work with our software. There's really no coding whatsoever that's required from the customer. Our software is flexible and easy to use, and it really furthers our commitment in order to provide the most painless data integration software for your project needs. They're very straightforward. Briefly speaking, we have a very simple pricing model. So not only do we save you development time and frustration, but also money, making us extremely cost effective. And lastly, our unparalleled performance is due to our offering many specially designed features that run more efficiently and faster. These features are available throughout all of our licensing models. So we want to stress you will not be sacrificing performance based on which licensing model you choose to be in line with your budget. All features and capabilities are available throughout all of our licensing models. We just want to reemphasize all the available connections. Um, these are just some of the many applications and database types that you can integrate with. So as you all know, 
um, there's an ever-evolving landscape when working with data. Businesses need a data integration and migration solution to evolve with their applications, databases, and business requirements. As time passes, our SSIS integration toolkit will easily keep up with these changes to provide full support. Also, Kingsway Soft in particular commits itself to continuous development based on the feedback of our users. Whether you're using a commercial license or, or our free developer's license, we really take your feedback into consideration because it tells us what your painful point, points are in a data integration or migration scenario is and how we can better our software continuously to provide up-to-date features that can help in a variety of scenarios. When the landscape changes in the application itself, um, such as support for new APIs, for example, we take that into consideration and provide new features, enhancements, and upgrades. And this is all in line to further our commitment to support any type of data scenario that you may run into. Now let's talk about how we can solve Microsoft Dynamics data integration challenges in an ever-evolving landscape. As you may know in your own lives, the Microsoft Dynamics environment is constantly evolving. This is something all solutions must consider in their development and support. In any type of data project, one of the most important goals is to work with clean data. This means removing duplicates and resolving data quality issues, such as data formatting, standard, standardization, and so on. Not only do you want to push clean data from one system to another, like say from your legacy system in a database table to a CRM 365, there needs to be a very firm strategy in place to keep the data clean overall. We have many features and components with this goal at the forefront. Just to kind of bring it back to what we showed you previously, um, the duplicate detector components can scan for duplicate rows based on a criteria that you specify. And another way to clean data is by using a premium derived column that has nearly 200 functions and expressions in order to transform data. One of those functions is um, targeted towards string manipulation, for example. Another challenge presents itself when businesses need to migrate data from perhaps a legacy system into Microsoft Dynamics 365. As we've mentioned before, it's really worth emphasizing again that a very strong benefit to working with the SSIS platform is that you can connect to virtually any databases and application system. Any migration is possible within SSIS. You know, as, as said before, you can extract from various source systems, um, such as a flat file, database, XML, et cetera. We have components for the full Microsoft Dynamics family suites, AX, CRM, NAV, GP, SL as well as other applications and database systems. Let's talk about bi-directional integrations between Dynamics applications, as well as any other type of application or database system. For example, you can read from a 365 CRM source and push that data to a Dynamics GP target. And you can also do it the other way around, starting with GP as your source, and CRM as your target. We also support integration between cloud and on-prem instances. In particular, this is something you would configure within your connection manager in order to connect to a specific instance. For example, if you would like to connect to an on-prem, through 365 CRM, you would choose the Active Directory option under your authentication type in the Connection Manager. 
when you're targeting a cloud, you can select the online federation option under authentication type within the same connection manager as well. Lastly, maintaining data integrity is of the utmost importance. Actions such as upsert can ensure your data does not add to more duplicate rows and is one of the ways you can manage bad data from affecting your task. With that said, I just want to wrap up and resummarize all the things that we've shown you today. We've gone through very common data challenges that you may be facing regarding your data migration, integration, and integrity scenarios. And we showed you two use cases. One use case where you are migrating data from perhaps a legacy system into the NAV target system. And we also showed you how to clean the data by using a duplicate data, duplicate detector component. The second use case that we showed you was with data in integration where we wrote, where we read from our NAV source system and we were able to push changes to both our CRM and Marketo targets simultaneously. So this was a great example to show you how you can have one action in your source system, for example, to trigger their appropriate actions in target systems. So again, as a sales order is completed in NAV, it can trigger a CRM workflow as well as trigger a marketing campaign to begin simultaneously. And then lastly, we showed you some tools and strategies where you can keep your data clean uh, using various methods towards derived column as well as the duplicate detector and things that you may need to keep in mind in order to work with clean data and to continuously keep that data clean. We've reached the end of our webinar today, so I do want to thank you again for joining us today. It was really a great pleasure of ours to work on a webinar such as this and to also learn from the audience as well.